Hey, long time uh, no talk about lyrics, right? Finally have a new single on our hands and uh, it's time to talk lyrics. This is probably gonna be a long one because there's a lot to unpack here. So uh, strap in. Um, I'm not gonna try and shorten it just because um, this is my very favorite song I've ever made so far. And um, I'm just going to just let it all out, okay? Um, where to even begin? Um, so, very excited in the uh, world of gaming right now because um, all of the uh, Silent Hill announcements got made tonight. Uh, Konami just came out and dumped like three, four new games on us. Um, a new movie's coming out based on the second game. Holy wow, they're remaking the second game. Holy wow, I'm so pumped. Um, one of my very favorite <clears throat> um, franchises. Um, it's a horror franchise, horror franchise, um, and it just, it inspires me to no end. Um, just like the, the the depth of it and the psychologicalness of it. And I'm, trust me, there's a point to this. Um, so I'm riding high on um, that announcement and that is what spurred me to get going um, tonight on my breakdown of Heather because the song Heather is based on the character Heather from Silent Hill 3. Um, I wrote a song about a video game character. And <laughs> before we go any further, it is it is not a love song. It is not a, I'm not simping for anybody. Um, um, I hope to have explained it fully by the end of it. And I think that um, I might learn something in unpacking all of this because a lot of this was wrote on... Um, indescribable feelings um, if that makes any sense I write a lot of my lyrics based on um, things that I like I, I write a line I'm like that's what it should be I don't entirely understand it but that's what it should be and um, I think that's fun because um, I'm still finding out what I'm trying to talk about or what I mean um, all this time later um, especially with even older damning songs there's some where I wrote lines and I'm like that's the line I don't know what it means it'll make sense one day and um, I think that's cool. So um, so why Heather? Why Silent Hill 3? Um, so um, to properly explain why I wrote this, I have to ex kind of explain um, some nostalgia to you. Um, nostalgia is a massive um, factor in what interests me and um, what inspires me. So um, Silent Hill 3, um, in a very strange and un unlikely way encapsulates, kind of captures um, a very specific nostalgia, one of my very favorite ones. Um, and it's of when I was 10 years old in 2003 when the game came out. So um, when I was 10 years old, um, I was still living with my parents. Um, I was really getting into video games at this time. This was like the beginning of like really getting into games. Um, I had had Mario games, you know, from when I was six and seven, I had Mario Kart and all that. Um, and I didn't even know that um, video game magazines existed. Um, that was a new thing to me. Um, at some point, you know, eight or nine, I learned about cheat codes, um, getting on websites like cheatcodes.com. Um, this is blowing my mind thinking about this. There were so many cheat code websites. Um, if you remember, you remember. Um, it was so cool. And there were so many fake codes and fake tricks. Um, there was fake stuff for Super Smash Brothers Melee, like do this insane thing to get uh, Sonic the Hedgehog to unlock, or you know, ground pound on top of the star in Mario 64 to unlock Luigi. Um, things we all try to do. Um, and it, it just captivated us, you know? Um, <clears throat> so that time period is when I discovered magazines. Um, and it all comes back to one specific magazine my mom bought me, and it was my very first one. Um, this is kind of the beginning of uh, my awareness of the Silent Hill series. So um, I have it right here. This is so cool. Um, this is the magazine my mom bought me in September of 2003. Um, and as you can see, Silent Hill 3. And uh, that's Heather on the cover, uh, staring back. <laughs> Starting to make a little sense. Um, I have a poster of this on my, right above my kitchen sink, like just right over there. You can't see it, but uh, it's there, I promise you. 
And um, I used to read this guide all the time. Um, I just would read through my magazines and over the years I read the guide to Silent Hill 3 multiple times. Didn't know anything about it. Didn't know what it meant. Didn't know what was going on. Never played it. Um, I just, I remember reading it and it was kind of one of those things. And that this magazine has always kind of stood out in my mind as like, you know, this is, this is my mom planted this seed she didn't know she planted of uh, just uh, creativity and um, um, video games as art and um, the idea of inhabiting other worlds, you know, people's created worlds. Um, really neat stuff to me um, and my it's just grown since then um, so as a kid I didn't really have much of a grasp on Silent Hill um, I'm talking about Silent Hill I, I just trust me we're going there um, and so let's think 2003 so 2006 rolls around um, and the movie comes out and I'm 13 and um, my I did I completely forgot about Silent Hill at that point um, I was playing Mario and Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Adventure 2, anybody, um, playing a lot of GameCube, did not have a PlayStation, sorry, I burped, I'm only doing one take of this, and it's going to be long, and you're going to get it all, so, um, so, Grandpa and my Uncle Ryan, um, are going to go see the Silent Hill movie, and, um, they asked me if I want to go, so I have to clear it with my dad, who was cool with it, and thank God dad was cool with it, because uh, <laughs> it's been such a huge source of inspiration since then, and um, I went with them to the movie, it was my first rated R movie in a theater, I was 13, probably shouldn't have been there, but hey, um, it made a mark on me, um, I was like, holy crap, that was terrifying, and kind of awesome at the same time, and um, I still don't know how to explain that feeling of uh why horror movies can be interesting um why st scary stuff is cool um i don't know how to describe that but it is something i experience as well as many others so um i that movie made a mark on my mind and it never really left um i was just very fascinated with it and um some years later i would say 2011 or 12 i was at a friend's house with a bunch of people and for movie night they wanted to watch the silent hill movie um, and I hadn't seen it since seeing it in theaters. Um, so I was, let's say, 17, 18 at the time, going on 19, somewhere in that realm of teenagerdom. And um, we watched the movie, and I was immediately captivated with the music. Oh my gosh, did the music just grab me. Um, it's melancholy, it's atmospheric. Um, it's ambient, but it's like, it's not boring background ambient. It's like, I want to know where this is taking me and what is this feeling it's making? And it's like, it's painting worlds in my brain. Like it's, it's just very moving, grabbing stuff, gripping stuff. Um, and as someone who's kind of on the melancholy spectrum of life or way of feeling, I don't know how to explain that. Um, that music resonated with me and I went on a just a internet deep dive right after that, where I was trying to get the soundtrack to the movie, finding out it didn't exist, and then finding out it came from the games, um, and finding out which tracks came from which game, and there's a fan website, uh, Silent Hill Memories, incredible place if you're into that, it has all the concept art, has all the different releases, scans of all the manuals, the cases, um, media, weird obscure promo releases, like, it's, it's the place to go, and, um, I went down their website and um, learned so much about the music of the games. Um, most of the music in the first movie um, comes from two, but there's also, uh, like some of the like recurring themes in the first movie are from the second game. Um, there's a few key tracks from um, three, um, there's a key tracks from four, um, so um, I'm trying to remember all of this to get how I got to three. Um, so um, I remember just consuming that whole uh, smattering of music. I was consuming all that music and just adding it into my listening repertoire and then just kind of fanboying on the movie, you know, internet deep diving and reading all I could read and um, just trying to learn and understand more about the series and why it, why it, what it was and what it was about. And, um, at some point, um, 
I discovered Silent Hill 3 existed um, again and found out it had a soundtrack. Well, um, being the internet fiend I was, I went and uh, downloaded the soundtrack because I didn't know how to go about buying it. I didn't know where to buy it. I don't even think it was on iTunes. I didn't use iTunes back then. I don't think I, I was just a little pirating machine. So I uh, went and got Silent Hill 3 soundtrack and um, started uh, taking that in. And um, one of my all time favorite songs comes from that soundtrack. It's called You're Not Here. Um, and it is the first credit song of the first movie. Um, right when the movie ends, just drops right in. And it is just a beautiful song. Um, Mary, I want to say her name is McGlynn. She had an alias she went by at times back then. Mary McGlynn's voice um, mixed with that music is just primo, favorite, uh, nostalgia, everything. And here's where the nostalgia comes into play because something about um, the music from that game makes me nostalgic for the time that it came out. Um, so even though I never encountered that music, let alone played the game until I was 19, 20, um, it took me right back to 2003 when I was a kid, um, had nothing to worry about. I was innocent. I was just playing games and being a kid, going to school, just wanting to have fun and just, um, ingesting the world as it came at me, you know, just taking in uh, new experiences and, uh, still in that window of time where, um, things become, uh, core to you. Um, I feel like at some point you, uh, you take in so many things and that just becomes like the makeup of your childhood. And then it changes at some point. Um, don't know when or what that is. That's a whole other rabbit hole, but, um, yeah, this, this game had this ability to transport me back in time. And it, it just, I remember being so fascinated by that because, um, I had never played it. I mean, I had this guidebook and that was kind of like my only uh, touchstone for it was I had this book that has the guide in it along with a million other things. Um, so um, had the soundtrack. Um, I ended up um, starting to buy the games. So I, uh, I tracked down a copy of three. Um, I had a used video game store and um, I thought it was amazing that it came with the soundtrack disc with the game. Um, so cool to me. I wish every game did that and, um, get to, um, playing it finally. I'm like 19. Um, and first time I put it in and start playing it, it's, um, it's evening. It's in my mom's house. Um, the lights are out. It's, but the sun's coming through the window. Um, and, um, first thing that happens is um, they play the opening movie and it's got You're Not Here on it, which I was already aware of that song, but then seeing it in the context of the game was like, it really like cemented that song and the era and the nostalgia and the love for it. And then um, you play a little bit um, through the first area and then you, uh, you get to the mall. Um, and here's another very key point. Um, sorry, my computer monitor just went to sleep. Um, um, you get to the mall, and then my favorite song of all time, um, period, over anything else, um, starts playing. And um, I'd never heard this song until I was 19. And um, it's called End of Small Sanctuary. Um, it's like a minute and a half trip-hop kind of song with this just luscious, sun-drenched um, flanger guitar and this, like, trip-hop beat. And it's just, it's one of the, it's just thick, and it just plunges you in. Um, that song just sounds like the color orange to me, um, like sunset. And that's, the, the game has a lot of orange around it. Um, hence the cover of the single being very orange. Um, and I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, this song is like the greatest thing I've ever heard. Um, and it was immediately nostalgic, um, even more so than You Were Not Here or any of the other, uh, Silent Hill <laughs> songs um and it is still to this day um i listen to it um try not to burn it out you know i want it to remain um powerful but um it's in my ambient chill out playlist and will always be there um so um at some point in the last couple of years um just in 
writing lyrics. Um, I sometimes just write things that come to mind. I don't have a song in mind. I just, I write lyrics and I write in lyric form. I write, this will be a verse, this will be a chorus. I don't know what it's for one day, but it'll be something. And um, I decided I wanted to write a song about Silent Hill, but I wanted to do it in a way that wasn't overtly nerdy. Um, I wanted to do it in a way that was cool and could have meaning beyond just knowing what the game's about and talking about the game. I wanted it to be written in a way that um, somebody could listen to that does not give one iota of a care about um, this game and the series, and um, you could get something out of it and draw an, a conclusion or a meaning or an inspiration from it. So it's a, it's a tightrope, right? Like, I want to pay homage, um, or I don't know how you say it, I want to pay respect, how about that, to uh, the source, but I also want to be ambiguous, right? So um, I started writing. And I wrote this one iteration of it, and I was like, mm, this isn't quite right. And so, as Josiah and I were putting together what would become um, the song Heather and the songs around it, I was like, I really want to make the song that became Heather, um, I wanted to put those lyrics to it. And uh, I remember we were going to do the lyric demo for it, and I was like, hey, um, this is weird and it's hyper personal for me and I don't know that it'll mean much to you, but I really want to do this. And um, <clears throat> I always want to make sure that when him and I make something like um, we're on board with it and I'm so appreciative and thankful for his trust when it comes to uh, me writing lyrics, um, that it means the world being able to, because uh, um, you know he pours his heart into this music just as much as I do and he pours his riffs into it and his ideas and his production um, and the songwriting, and um, I want him to feel like, you know, I'm not soiling whatever he makes, right? So I, I just want to make sure, like, when we're putting the stuff together, that we're on the same page, and um, he's cool with it. So I told him um, I want to make this song. It's about a character from a game. Um, like, here it is. And he just let me go for it, and um, it turned into what it is today, right? But um, I rewrote those lyrics sometime shortly before that and ended up with what's on the record. Um, so, um, let's just dive into this and then I'll try to, uh, explain it to the best of my ability, try to, uh, kind of draw a unique conclusion from it. How about it? So let me do this so I don't get frog voice on you. Okay. So I have right here, before we move on, my handy dandy Heather single. It looks like a PC game to me. Almost looks like a game for Windows, except the uh, the K through A uh, rating, <laughs> which is a uh, now defunct rating that the ESRB um, used back in the day. Um, Super Mario 64 is rated K through A, I believe. Um, some games back then, kids to adult. And it's kind of neat because K through A, uh, KA is the word Ka, which uh, is from the Dark Tower series, Stephen King Dark Tower series, which inspired Sounds Like a Voice. Um, or at least a part of Sounds Like a Voice, which I talked about in the previous video, which you need to watch if you haven't watched already. And um, so if I ever get around, when I get around to making the Sounds Like a Voice case, it's gonna have KA on it, it's gonna be, say, Ka, and it'll be all, you know, thematically sound. Um, so I'm going, if you haven't seen these things, if you haven't been to a show to see one, we've only played one show since I released them, look, there's a reflection on me. Um, lyrics are on the back and um, yeah, so. You need to get one of these, seven bucks. So I'm gonna use this to refer to lyrics so I don't have to sit here and go, what are they saying next? Um, so first line, Heather, what's the weather in your head? <laughs> so um, opening scene of Silent Hill 3, um, the character Heather, um, she is in a diner. Um, she is face down on the table, um, she fell asleep. Um, there is a set of blinds right beside her and there is just, pure orange, darker orange sunlight pouring through. The whole scene is just drenched in dark orange. Um, and I remember when I was growing up, there were so many times like the room I played games in at my mom and dad's um, sunset. That was like the time when I would play games and like sunset would come through the windows. And this, that whole, um, that whole scene in the game um, just reminded me of that. And I felt like, oh man, that's it, like, that's the vibe, like, that's the, that was the time, you know, that was a special time for me, so, um, 
I tried to put myself in the game, you know, in, in certain ways in these lyrics, and I, uh, I'm like, this is me trying to understand why I wrote this stuff, or trying to remember what sparked it. Um, I wanted to engage the character Heather, right? So, like, these lyrics, in a lot of ways, are me having a conversation with somebody that I will never get to have a conversation with. Um, it's a neat thing to be able to do that in a song. I mean, that's probably one of the only arenas that you can do it in. Um, you get to have this conversation with somebody that um, isn't talking back and you do it in a meaningful way. Um, so, um, Heather, what's the weather in your head? Um, I like the idea of um, what's going in our, on in our heads is weather. And um, she's a neat character. Um, if you haven't played the game, she's a character that's kind of like, you don't know really what she's thinking. Um, and um, she's maybe one of the more relatable protagonists because um, she's kind of swept up into events that are bigger than her. Um, and I think it's neat because she doesn't care about understanding um, everybody's motives and trying to understand, you know, why are these people acting this way or why is this happening? Like she questions it, but like she doesn't get hung up on it. She just, she's just sick of it and wants to like put it to bed. Um, and I kind of love that. Like she, she's not um, just like an ooh and awe of all the spooky stuff going on around her. Like it affects her, but it, it doesn't rule her. And I, I think that's really cool. Um, so um, the question, what's the weather in your head is just, you know, like, what are you thinking? You know, what's going on in there? Like, how are you responding to all this? And um, what is life to you? Um, are you dreaming something sunny or of terrors that you've bled? Um, so, um, the sun, again, it comes back to the sun and the sunlight, um, trying to, um, touch on that and then contrast it with the idea of, um, terrors that you've bled. So, um, if you know the game at all, um, she goes through a lot in the game. It's, um, a lot of chaos and I won't spoil it here in case you want to go play it. Um, but she goes through, um, some crazy stuff and, uh, you know, I'm just like, are you thinking about that? Are you thinking of something lighter, something better? Um, echoes of your time still reminding me of mine. So this is tying into the nostalgia and the idea of, um, just like relating to this character, um, trying to relate to this character. How about that? Um, my life has been nothing like this video game character. It's just, um, the echoes of her time, um, the memories of the things that still remain from 2003, you know, those nostalgias and those, those fondnesses for, um, certain, um, rooms and lightings. And, you know, I love, um, all my friends that come over and that know me well, uh, no, I don't have a lot of lights on. I have lights on right now because you got to be able to see me, but, um, I never open the blinds or the drapes rather. I don't have blinds here. Um, I just let the sun do its thing through those. And, uh, I like walk around like a mole <laughs> and, um, I have a fondness of that because it's nostalgic, you know, when the evening comes and it's just, it's just that moody light. Um, I like orange light. Um, I don't like white light. Um, I like orange light. Now, you know, um, and then the next line plays into that very well. Uh, so very vespertine are worlds that cross. Um, there is a Bjork, it's either a song or an album name, um, called vespertine. And, um, when I hear words like that, that I don't know the meaning of that sound beautiful or cool, I'm like, Ooh, I need to write that down. I need to figure out what that means. Um, and when I found out that that word, um, means, um, related to the evening or like the evening, um, having to do with evening, essentially, I'm probably butchered that. Um, I was like, I want to put that in a song. Um, Maynard from tool does that so well. Um, he uses words, um, that shouldn't work in a song and makes them work. And, um, I want to do that because I don't, I don't want to just dumb things down and I don't want to repeat what everybody else says. I want to say things in a way that they've never been said and that, that are still relatable. Um, so, and I, uh, I like to provoke thought in people, right? So, so very vespertine are worlds that cross. So, um, I, my, my realm is very evening and that game is very evening if you've ever played it there's no it doesn't take place in daylight it's always night um there's a brief moment where you're outside but it's like pure overcast and it's just like this timeless place but um for the most part it's evening there's this evening uh orangey feel to it 
and like the idea of like me experiencing that world um has affected my world and so there's like the idea of worlds that cross right you hear me say that word a lot um i love the idea of worlds um it means a lot of different things um all right so um let's do the chorus so heather staring back with eyes of iron and a will of steel so um comes back to this magazine um this character staring back um or she's staring back off the tv screen you know the old crt monitor and you got your dual shock in your hand um this is the nerdiest thing in the world um the idea of that character looking back at you and um you know it's just a character but like at the same time like you know it these stories will impact you what you know whether it's a movie um, I know movies are the more traditional thing, um, like entertainment that will make an impact on you. But uh, for me, it's been video games. Um, so there's that idea of Heather is staring back and she's got these eyes of iron, but she's got a will of steel. So her eyes are kind of haunted. Um, they're not filled with light. Um, they are kind of dark. Um, at this point in the song, you know, there's this idea of a progression, which I'll get to, um, and a will of steel. So for Heather to do the things she does in the game and, um, to put up with what she puts up with and go through and overcome, um, she has a will of steel running through her. And, um, I wanted to speak to that, um, cause she goes through some crazy stuff and, um, she's 17, um, according to the lore, but she's also much older and that's a whole thing in the game. They're not gonna go there. It's not worth bringing up. Um, and so um, that's that's speaking about her. And then the last bit of the chorus, all the secrets of my own time coming to standing still. Um, their line was originally all the secrets of my own time coming to their standing still. Um, but we didn't want to cram too many words in, so we just put like, uh, we took the there out and so it's just coming to standing still like two things happening to the secrets of my own time um, which means um, as i play this game understand it experience it it helps me to understand um, my own nostalgia um, it helps me understand um, why i'm fond of a certain time um, like this game that i had no connection to until i was much older um, what about it, you know, why, what about the, the 2003 ness of it, um, captivates me. And, um, so the more I learned about this and ingested it and spent time with it, um, it helped me to kind of unpack the secrets of my own time. Um, and that's super nerdy and that's super personal, but like, Hey, that's, that's what it is. Um, I feel like I spend a lot of my time, um, trying to understand things I experienced before. Um, I have a good, good friend that I spoke to at length about this and how um, we want to be present and we want to be in the moment and be um, intentional about being in the moment. But um, it's like our heads are always in the past. Um, I am someone who is constantly remembering things. Um, I'm either remembering dreams, very obscure, like, flashes of dreams will come to me randomly while I'm just at work or I'm having a conversation with somebody and it makes it hard to focus or I I will um, remember um, just obscure strange moments from elementary school or childhood or being a teenager and uh, I'll remember cringy things I've said or done and like have to like relive the cringe and um, it's a never-ending thing for me um, it's kind of tormenting at times to be honest with you but um at the same time, it's made me a very uh, sentimental, nostalgic type person. Um, and it, I, it's just like everything has meaning, everything has sentimental value. Um, and that's kind of like the lens, the filter at which I look through the world, live my life, right? Um, so um, that's kind of a driving force in um, the games I play or the movies I choose to watch. Like there's some sort of connection to before or um, um, yeah, there's always a, there's a, some sort of connection to before. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, that kind of motivates that decision to engage whatever that art is or that medium or that story. Um, and then there's also this other thing of trying to understand things that I half remember from childhood. Um, so like 
a, another factor in playing Silent Hill 3 is like, um, it was on the cover of this magazine and I never played it. And I, uh, I spent a lot of time reading this and I, you know, I want to know what it's about. I want to, uh, understand it rather than it just be some sort of mystery in my head. I feel like I'm spending so much um, time as an adult, um, solving childhood mysteries, um, not really to a detriment, but, um, I don't know. It's kind of like you're, you're being a hero to yourself as a kid in some ways with, you know, like buying, um, old collectibles and whatnot. Um, I have me and Josiah both do that kind of thing. Um, so nostalgia is a huge thing. So, um, all the secrets of my own time coming to standing still. So there's this discovery of, um, secrets here that are, um, finally being made manifest and getting exposed. So uh, second verse, and, um, okay, I don't want to explain that yet. So, um, first line, closer, convinced, you don't have to hide. Um, this line's a little more difficult to unpack. Um, the word closer is the name of one of the enemies in the game, probably the most iconic enemy from Silent Hill 3. Um, it's like the first one you see, and they're horrific. They're like these eight foot tall with these just like big meaty, blunt, uh, limbs, um, just quite a character. <laughs> so, um, I wanted to weave some of those references in here for people that, um, would understand them. Um, so when you see it, like, Hey, he knows, he knows that he knows that game. Um, so closer convinced you don't have to hide. So like, I also wanted it to mean like she's getting closer to, um, being confident in herself. She's, as she progresses through the game, she's, um, she draws these conclusions and becomes confident in them. Um, so the idea of you don't have to hide, um, um, the character Heather, um, that's not her original name. And, um, as she progresses through the game, she realizes she doesn't have to hide anymore. Um, so I wanted to speak to that. And then true names and colors, true names, right? And colors, we know what's inside. Um, and I, I honestly don't know how to explain that line very well. Uh, true names and colors, we know what's inside. Um, so it's like the idea of like, as we see her progress through this game, we come to understand the character more and um, realize that um, what's inside of her. Um, you know, we learn true name. We, we see um, what she's made of, I guess. And then um, the next line, you cannot defend from your sanctuary's end. Um, that's just as much a line to myself as it is to the character. Um, and it also pays homage to my very favorite song. Homage, there's that word again. Pays a uh, tribute to my very favorite song of all time, which is End of Small Sanctuary from Silent Hill 3. That's that trip hop song. Um, and then like the idea of a sanctuary ending. Um, we, we can't defend, we can't um, help um, our childhood's coming to an end. It just happens at some point and we all grow up. Um, and there's a lot of times that, um, thinking back, like, um, and I'm not, I know I can't remember all of childhood and like the, you know, you remember the good stuff and not the bad stuff. Um, childhood seems like it's just like heaven at times that, that carefree, um, time is not an object. Um, I don't have to worry about a job bills, especially summertime, summertime, you just, you just live life unhindered, um, uninhibited. And, um, at some point that sanctuary goes away. Um, and for the character Heather in the game, um, when the game starts, um, somebody, a detective sent out to meet her to figure out, um, who she is and where she is for this cult. And, uh, once he finds her and, um, discovers where she is, like, her whole world like changes and shatters and like you see it um, play out through the game um, and she couldn't defend from it. You know, it just happens. Um, it's just like um, our song, all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden we were never the same. Um, everything changed. Everything changed. Like there's things that happen in life and we all know this, um, that um, they strike us. They happen to us. Um, we don't see them coming. We have no control. Um, and we're never the same for better or worse at times, you know, so it just depends on what's going on. And then, um, 
the last line of the second verse is a lot like the So Very Vespertine line. It's same and dissimilar, sun-kissed chaos. Um, I think on the record I say sun kiss chaos, but um, I really want it to be sun kissed. That was the intention, so um, that's what I wrote on the lyrics. So um, it's me speaking about how um, my uh, my evening world, my evening realm is similar to hers. So um, it's the same, but it's dissimilar, um, and it's sun kissed chaos. Um, the game is orange tinged. Um, orange lit chaos um, there's peaceful moments but like it's just like walking through a, a rusty nightmare a lot of the times in that game it's very um, heavy atmosphere um, and then there's this um, I don't have a specific moment in my life where like sun-kissed chaos um, it implies but you know um, it resonates with me to speak about you know certain moments like that in my life because um, there's been times, you know, like just, uh, that, that evening is around and, you know, there's something happening and there's something going wrong or there's something going right. And, um, regardless, like, um, it's chaos <laughs> and it can be a good chaos. Um, and again, that's, that's kind of a hard, um, thing to describe. So I hope I'm not rambling too much for you. Um, so let's go to the bridge. We're almost there. I promise. Um, Sometimes it's a daydream. Sometimes it's a nightmare, Heather. Um, so in the Silent Hill games, they're, um, when the bad guys come out or whatever, the enemies come out. Um, I'm trying to explain this in a way that people that don't play games or play, have played it understand. Um, there's moments of like just peace and you're going through perfectly normal real world environments. And then um, the nightmare, you end up in the nightmare realm, right? Which is where uh, Silent Hill's um, kind of otherworldly unseen figures manifest um, just like a broken down, rusted out, uh, nightmarish version of that reality. And you end up in it and you're fighting the monsters in it. So um, talking about life for Heather, sometimes it's a daydream, sometimes it's a nightmare. Um, sometimes everything's great. Sometimes you're in the mall and end a small sanctuary is playing and all is right in the world. <laughs> um, and then sometimes you're in um, the complete nightmare that is um, the Silent Hill series at time. Um, and then the next line, um, you're not here for wolves to devour. So this is like a double reference. So um, the song, You're Not Here, it's the main theme of Silent Hill 3. It's the first credit song on the movie. Um, and like I was talking about Mary McGlynn's voice, um, that's that song. Um, and I wanted to speak to that song and, um, end of small sanctuary specifically with, uh, these lyrics, because those two songs, I cannot, um, over, I don't know what the word is. I can't, um, speak too highly of their, um, influence and specialness to me. It's impossible for me to overstate um, how much they've inspired me to make the art that I make that you hopefully enjoy. Um, so I say, you're not here for wolves to devour. Um, the main antagonist from Silent Hill 3 is a woman named Claudia Wolf, and she's the leader of the cult that's looking for Heather, right? So um, this is just me engaging the character with Heather again and saying, you're not here for wolves to devour. You're not here for that cult to uh, take you and do what they want to do with you. Um, and then I say, we're not here for wolves to devour. So it's kind of like lumping myself in with Heather and like the idea of as we go through our lives, um, we're not here um, to be subject to the wills of people that would uh, want to harm us or use us for ill. Um, we're not here for that. We're not here for wolves to take advantage of us. And then um, a line that I wanted to add, I didn't know how to add it, and Andrew was, Andrew Stanton was key in helping us figure this one out. Um, he said, we should just sing it in the background. It's still audible. Um, it may be hard to make out if you don't know what I'm saying, but I say, for the dogma of these wolves. So we're not here for the dogma of these wolves. And again, the cult in the game has this crazy faith, and um, it's very twisted, and um, they're trying to um, force it upon Heather. And... Um, so um, we're not here for um, someone to impose um, or um, force us into their way of thinking. Um, 
it's fine if somebody wants to share it with us, but like they can't force us to think a certain way or feel a certain way. Um, we have choices, we have free will, and we have um, the ability and agency to make choices. Um, so um, that's the idea with that line. And also I wanted to contrast um, the idea of dogs with wolves. So um, I wanted to kind of knock the wolves down to the level of dogs. Like try to say that like um, these wolves are not really wolves. They're just mutts. They're just dogs. Um, they're not worth being bothered over. Um, kind of just a dig at that. So there's that. And then the final chorus, um, we're almost there. Um, Heather staring back with eyes of fire. Um, so here, the character Heather, and this is kind of like the climax of the song, right? Like the, the notes are higher on the voice. Um, the music's going full bore. Um, staring back with eyes of fire. So Heather has come to this point where like, um, now when you look at it, um, you see someone that is confident, knows who they are, and um, knows what they're capable of. And they're in the full realization of that. And it's beautiful. Um, all the secrets of our times are standing still. Um, and it's just like this moment, like we've, we have reached um, a moment where we, we understand ourselves and we're confident in who we've been made to be and what we're supposed to be. And um, we have solved the mysteries that plague us. Um, all the secrets of our times are standing still. Um, they, don't, they no longer spin around us and nag at us and haunt us and um, torment us with um, unending what ifs and questions which is um, my brain to a T. Um, I am a, um, I don't have control over it. Um, it's intrusive thoughts. It's what it is. It's just, um, if something happens out of my control, um, my brain thinks that it needs to try and um, assert some control over it by um, coming up with every angle, every what if, every possibility, and um, just, endlessly playing him out like some sort of broken machine and um this moment in this song is, is still it's a moment of liberation it's like a, a hope of liberation from that and um all the secrets of our times are standing still it's it's done um so yeah um i wanted to pay tribute to this character in this game um i know it's a lot a lot of nostalgia a lot of history there <laughs> Um, I just thought it was a really neat way to, um, again, pay tribute to something I love while, um, creating something interesting for, um, someone else. And, um, I have to remember the name of his channel. It's, I want to say Sanctify Studios or Sanctified Studios. Um, they reacted to Heather and they said something very beautiful and it's one of the highest compliments, um, I've ever received. And it was about the song and how it is much like a falling up song and that you don't exactly know what it's about, but you know what you're supposed to feel um, when you listen to it. And when you know, when you read the lyrics, if you don't know what they're about. And um, that is so beautiful to me because um, one falling up is a massive uh, influence and just a big favorite of mine as far as music goes. And um, like, I still have no idea what Jesse Rebordi is singing about. I wish I did. I wish I could read the stories that those albums are based upon. <laughs> um, but at the same time, just because I don't know what he's talking about doesn't mean I don't get anything out of it and I can't feel something and feel inspired by it. Um, and I've, I'm so thankful that um, this song resonated with that guy the way it did. Um, that means the world. Um, so yeah. Um, I'm about out of words. I, I should be out of words. We're about at 45 minutes now. So, um, yeah, that's my best uh, go at explaining Heather to you. Um, it obviously means a lot to me. Um, I hope it comes to mean a lot to you as well. Um, maybe um, understanding what it's about, maybe it spoils some of the magic and the mystery of it. Um, I, I don't know. Sometimes I think it's it's good to avoid watching things like this because um, 
it does take the mystery out and it takes what kind of like keeps you thinking about it away. But um, I'm somebody that can't resist things like this when it comes to uh, like, if Maynard were to come out and talk about all the Tool songs and say, um, this is what this one's about. This is what this line comes from. And like kind of it just expounds it. Like it would be so fun to ingest, but um, then your brain just files it away as to, um, I know what that is. Um, so moving on. Um, at least that's how it works for me. Um, it's not the best, but um, it is what it is, right? So um, I hope you got something out of this. If you made it this far, um, bless your heart. Um, I talk a lot. I'm very thankful that you made it this far. <laughs> um, thank you so much for listening and supporting us. Um, there is so much more on the way. Um, I feel like we're we're just starting the real meat of what Adamic is and what it's going to become with these songs as they come out. Um, I'm beyond excited to share with you the rest of what we've got cooking. It's not going to be a quick thing. Um, going to try and enjoy the ride as much as we can, but, uh, um, just, you know, come along with us. Um, we want you to get something out of it because we're getting something out of it and as we make it. <laughs> Um, we're expressing ourselves, but we're also, you know, we're, we're learning something about it and, um, becoming ourselves through it. Um, so I hope these songs, um, follow you through your life as well and, uh, you know, help make certain moments, um, better or magical or even nostalgic. Um, that's the ultimate, right? Um, so thank you so much. Um, take care.